from the bright blue waters of the coastline to a small blue shed in town, this region is revitalising an ancient craft to tackle the problem of fish waste. And as long as the meat is gone... This is the only fish leather company in the country. Mermaid Leather's owner, David McDermott, says the idea came to his brother Andrew and his friend and business partner, Bob Bubb, while they were working in the fishing industry. Bob owned and operated his own commercial fishing boat and um, he saw, literally visually saw, the amount of waste being generated by his fishing boat. When they started almost 30 years ago, tanning fish skins was unheard of. But after four years, they finally developed a strong quality fish leather. Both men have since died, leaving David to carry on the legacy and the business. These skins are all generated as 100% waste from the... The driving factor behind the, the entire concept of mermaid leather right from the very beginning was about sustainability in the fishery. Fish skin is regarded as 100% waste from the commercial fishery, so it either ends up back in the ocean or straight into landfill. Mr McDermott pays 34 US cents per kilo for that skin and brings it to his workshop. From there, it takes four weeks, from removing the scales, putting the skins in a drum to be pickled, tanned, dried, coloured and eventually turned into wallets, handbags and clothes, some that have even been shown off in the New York fashion scene. Genuine uh, piece of leather. The shop also serves as an education centre for tourists. Australians love seafood. From canned tuna to prawns and fish and chips, the country eats about 400,000 tonnes of seafood a year, and that all contributes to landfill. Two-thirds of the fish Australians eat is wasted, and worldwide 10 million tonnes of fish is discarded every year, a figure David is trying to change. It's about educating the next generation in sustainable practices by looking at products that we can use that are normally perceived as waste. If you can flip that script, to use a cliche, um, then we're not only enhancing our own life, but we're actually benefiting the planet. That's an image recently laid out by the top agency representing the Australian seafood industry that has released a national plan that aims to future-proof the supply of sustainable seafood. And the Great Australian Seafood brand is really interesting because Australian seafood is premium, we do have beautiful clean waters around Australia, but actually the Australian brand means more than that. So we invest heavily in this country in responsible or sustainable fishing. But while Australian fishing practices continue to evolve and consumers become more conscious of where their food comes from, the worldwide waters of the seafood industry remain murky. We see some of these things on social media or from overseas where sharks are being slaughtered and fish are being you know, taken and not being treated properly, not being treated humanely. We see all, we hear stories of in the Northern Hemisphere where people who are working on boats aren't getting paid the correct amount of rates. We're really, really conscious of that and we do not want to be labelled with the same brush. For the past two decades, West Western Australia has embraced seafood sustainability as part of its commitment to fish for the future. But Western Australia is just one part of the global puzzle. According to the Mindaroo Foundation's Global Fishing Index, overfishing has left a tenth of the world's fishing population on the brink of collapse. The United Nations warns that action is needed now and time is running out. Danielle Robertson, CNA, Western Australia.